What's poppin' guys and welcome back. This week we're gonna be taking a look at a bunch of different things actually. As you saw in the title, we're gonna be talking about tips and tricks to make your Minecraft builds a lot more realistic. To be honest, it's pretty difficult. I totally understand that a lot of people will have trouble with it, but I think I've got some pretty great tips for you guys, so be sure to stick around if you really wanna ramp up the realism in your Minecraft builds. As we go through our tips for today, I'm gonna to be working on a bunch of different builds. I'm gonna be using the advice from this video to make some really neat stuff, like this and this, so if that sounds fun, then stick around to the end for the big reveal with shaders. And as always, if you like my tips, my voice, my edits, or anything like that, feel free to drop a like down below. Let's get right into 7 quick tips for making realistic builds in Minecraft. Gravity, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole tip right there. Nah, but actually though, gravity is genuinely one of the main things that people forget about when building, and usually that's fine. Minecraft blocks aren't affected by gravity, except for a few, and that allows for a lot more freedom and creativity when you're building houses, farms, etc. But we're gonna have to start thinking about it again if we wanna make builds look as realistic as possible. Now when I say to add gravity, of course that means don't build a giant floating box in the sky but there's more to it than that. In the real world, structures need support to stay upright. We've got things like pillars, load-bearing walls, and all these other funky infrastructure techniques that make sure your houses and skyscrapers don't just flop over. Applying the same logic to Minecraft, make sure that whenever you're building outwards, your structure is supported. Whenever you have a build with multiple components, make sure they're all connected and secure to each other. Whenever you're building a tall building, make sure it's reinforced and thick enough at the base to to stand upright. I know it's kind of tricky to get in the habit of thinking about gravity because like the entire game just gives gravity the finger, but if you can keep it in the back of your mind as you build, I bet your builds will look a lot more <laughs> grounded in reality. For older ruined builds like ancient temples and castles, there are a few really important ideas to keep in mind. A lot of the time when people say realistic builds, they mean builds that are old and crumbling, like ruins. People really like building this way, and I don't blame them. There's nothing cooler than having an ancient crumbling castle covered in vines. If the build is on the smaller side, it's actually a really good idea to first build up the entire thing in a non-ruined form, and then go back and ruin it up. Of course, this is going to take extra time and additional materials, but it gives you the best results. The thing about this method is that you can almost like simulate erosion and wear and tear over time by breaking specific parts of the build. You can't really do that if you design it from the ground up already looking ruined. As you dismantle your project, think about what sections would start crumbling first. These kinds of structures don't usually crumble everywhere at the same rate. If you've got like any thin pillars or flimsy bits, they're probably going to fall apart way before the thicker, stronger foundational sections towards the bottom. On the other hand, things like moss and vines start at the bottom and work their way up. So if you're adding foliage, it won't really look right if the top is covered in leaves, but the bottom part that's actually connected to the ground is clean. In summary, here are my three tips for aesthetically ruining your builds. 1. Build it properly first and then go back and ruin it. 2. Different parts erode at different rates. 3. Vines and moss start at the bottom and and travel up. Alright, for these next few tips, we're going to be taking a specific genre of Minecraft build, like houses, castles, landscape terraforming, and making those more realistic. So if you're working on a similar kind of project, this ought to be very helpful. As you build different sections of a house, consider what their purpose actually is. Everyone knows how to throw together a basic house design in Minecraft. We've all done it, the standard like 2012 oak wood plank box with the door and some torches, and there is nothing wrong with that. But let's be honest, it is not realistic. If you want to take your regular old Minecraft house and ramp up the realism, consider the following. Roofs are meant to shelter your build from the elements, in particular rain, so make sure that they hang over your wall 
walls a bit and are sloping down so rainwater can run off of it. This right here is not realistic. This is a bit better. Houses are full of supports to keep the roof up. So unless you're building a tiny little hut, it would make sense to add interior walls or pillars or maybe support beams underneath the roof. A house that's just one giant open space with no walls is definitely more practical to live in, but we're not going for practicality here. We want all realism all the time. Houses, especially contemporary ones, usually have a different material on the inner wall than the outer wall. So if you've got the space for it, try making your walls two blocks thick with different materials on each side. Check out my video on interiors from a while back if you want to hear more about that. To make realistic landscapes, you really just gotta think about erosion. If you're worried that you don't know much about these kinds of natural erosive processes, don't worry. The cool thing about how landscapes form is that we already intuitively understand these things and just kinda take it for granted. With a little bit of explaining, it becomes very easy to comprehend. Okay, okay, what on earth am I talking about? Let me give you a couple in-game examples. Rivers. Vanilla rivers are not realistic, and if you've got a river anywhere near your build, it's worth doing a bit of terraforming to really spice it up. When water runs through the ground, it breaks down the dirt and the rock into finer and finer grains, called sediments, which build up in the bottom of the river. So if you're terraforming a river, or any body of water really, it makes sense to have finer grain materials closer to the river or even inside it. Some Minecraft mods actually illustrate this pretty well, with tools that can break down stone into gravel, and into clay, into sand, and then into dust, I think. Haven't actually played it. In vanilla, of course, we can't do that, but we can kinda simulate it in our landscapes. Instead of doing what vanilla does, where you have random patches of sand and grass along the river, which is not realistic, try having a border of sand or gravel closer to the riverbed, which then kinda fades into the grass as you go further inland. Blocks like andesite, gravel, clay, and coarse dirt have that kinda grainy, sedimenty texture that we're looking for. Now let's look at cliffs and mountains. In the real world, mountains are made up of many, many, many layers of rock compacted into each other, forced up into the air by tectonic movements. So if you want to capture some of that cool texturing, try bringing in a few more blocks to your mountain size. Of course, Minecraft doesn't have tectonic plates or any such thing as older and newer rock, but a bit more detail on these otherwise plain stone surfaces is pretty great. Here's my mountain side design with all of these different gray blocks blending into each other, making it look like the mountain is a huge collection of millions of years of different rock types, which is what mountains are in real life. Most of the time, your castle, fortress, or whatever stony structure you're building is going to be old and worn. And we talked a lot about how to ruin your builds in tip number two, but I would like to expand upon that right now with a bit more advice specifically on stone structures. So we're making these builds feel old, right? Like they've been exposed to the elements for a long, long time. In that case, we should pay extra attention to the biome that we're building in. A watchtower in a swamp is slowly going to sink into the wet, muddy ground ground and become overgrown with vines and weird clumpy bits of moss and all that. On the other hand, a watchtower on top of a snowy mountain is going to become cold and icy and chip away as the years go by. Everything erodes faster in warmer, wetter temperatures, so it actually makes sense to have the swamp tower be way more dilapidated than the mountain tower, assuming they were both built around the same time. While you're thinking about the biome, also take a moment to consider your surroundings. It really doesn't make too much sense realistically if your castle is covered in moss and vines when there's no other moss and vines anywhere else in your biome. It's been a hot minute since we talked about trees. And to be honest, I haven't made too many. Trees are fun, but they're not my favorite thing to build. I do still want to take a couple minutes to talk about some of what I feel like are the most important tips for realistic trees, because everyone likes them. First of all, unless you're making some really, really minor additions, I wouldn't bother working with an existing tree. Most people, when they try and make realistic custom trees, want to make bigger, grander ones like these. And you can't really work with an existing vanilla tree to make these, you just gotta start from scratch. You can use vanilla 
vanilla trees if you just want to like expand them a little bit, add some leaves here and there, and maybe a couple branches, but anything beyond that is going to require starting from nothing. Second thing I want to mention is that most trees need more than just the logs. If you're making a huge tree, then you can probably get away with only using logs, like in my big Japanese cherry tree, but otherwise you will need stairs, slabs, and probably fences to make a convincing looking tree shape. Lastly, let me walk you through the general procedure I use to make a custom tree. Start with your location and build up. Try and have your trunk angle off to the side a bit, maybe even a diagonal if you're feeling extra spicy. But this little slant is very important. It's okay if your trunk is really thin right now because we're going to thicken it out later. Next, go in and add your branches. Make sure you've got ones facing upward, downward, and in all 360 degrees. You don't want huge gaps in your tree. Once you've got branches, it is time to thicken everything out. Make sure that the trunk is still noticeably thicker than the branches once you're done though. Then it's foliage time. I actually start with a solid block, like moss or green concrete, to give the tree a little bit more opaqueness. Once you've got a few of these scattered around, now go in with the leaves. Be sure to make it big, round, and bushy. You might want to even try using a couple different kinds of leaves. I personally love using oak in the main bushy area and having azalea leaves droop down. Last but not least, do your final touches and details. Your trunk might need some refinement, and you might want to add in little things like hanging roots, spore blossoms, glowberry vines, or other things like that. And now you have a tree that looks a lot more realistic than most things in the vanilla game. If you're having trouble with anything I've just talked about, find some good reference images. I know this might sound a bit silly, but seriously, reference images will make your life way easier. I know that I use references all the time for my projects. It could be another Minecraft build, a sketch you or someone else made, or a picture from the real world. No matter what it is, having something with you to act as a guide and a source of inspiration is a huge help. You'll notice that in a lot of my 7 Quick Tips videos and even some of my older building time lapse videos, I make sure to show my reference images, if I'm allowed to of course. That's because I really think it's cool and important for the viewers to see where I'm getting my ideas from. That way, hopefully you all will be more encouraged to do the same thing. My go-to is Google Images or Google Street View if you want to have a look at a specific location in the real world, and if you want images that are copyright free, I recommend Unsplash.com. Not sponsored, not sponsored, not sponsored. But sometimes there's nothing quite as good as your own imagination. Imagination. In which case, don't be afraid to bust out a pencil and paper and get those ideas written down. It might seem silly to do all this extra research for a Minecraft build, but like, don't worry about it. We all just want to make our builds look as good as possible, and this is part of the process. Okay, that is all of today's tips. Now for what you were waiting for, the big reveal. I've spent a long time tweaking and terraforming these builds, so a like and a sub would be really appreciated. And here we are. that, I think that is just about all the video time we've got for today. If you're hearing this message right now, thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it, honestly. Let me know down in the comments if this video was helpful. Realistic builds can mean a lot of different things, but I presented my view of it and I hope it made sense to you too. Until next time, this has been Leon and I will see you all in the next 7 Quick Tips video. Stay cool my dudes.